reflection, what you feel were the key learnings for you from having competed at the Rio Olympics in relation to how you will go about preparing uh, for the uh, World Champs later in the summer? Yep, you know, I would say that um, I, was a, I was a junior last year, or the year before, and transitioning to the senior rankings and the senior stage is really different. You know, being at an Olympic Games, I'm around all my rivals and all my idols at the same time. I think going into London 2017, I now am a lot more confident and I believe in myself, and I now see myself being more world class. In all the sports you've covered, uh, what is your take on the significance of the head coach, the manager, the team leader? Well, we do live in the cult of the manager at the moment, but I think the importance of the manager was identified by uh, Eddie Jones on Sunday. The, the uncontrollable was Italy coming up with uh, a new plan. And the faces of the England players, it was a kind of comical befuddlement. They didn't know what to do in the first half. At half time, Jones, who is a distance and can look at the broader picture, came up with a quick and simple and understandable solution to that problem. And in the second half, they put it into action and it wasn't a problem anymore. And the best managers do that. It's not complicated, it's not rocket science. It's a very difficult job, but it isn't complicated. And the simpler you can make it, the better you'll be. So you might have heard me talk about A.B. de Villiers and his clear head, strong feet, watch the ball. Those were his controllables in that moment. Do you have anything like that when you're at the top of your run-up? To be honest, I just thought, run fast, jump. Well, there we go. <laughs> I, I mean, in fact, do you know what, that's what I miss now, actually, as a, a non-athlete, is the lack of simplicity in my life. There's yeah. sort of multiple goals and chasing around your heads full of stuff. When I was an athlete, it was incredibly simple. You're growing up in an age of sport where backroom support teams are large. Mm. You've got all manner of different specialists milling around the place. How do you keep things simple? How do you filter out what advice is going to help you and maybe some advice that isn't going to be helpful? So I like to just keep it really simple. You know, I have my main coach, um, my medical team, and then a psychologist that I work with, and then that's enough for me. I have my mum, who's great support, and my family. But um, apart from that, I don't like to overcomplicate things. It is as simple as just running <laughs> um, as fast as you can at the end of the day. So. so you've been out in what we might loosely refer to as the real world um, for quite a few years uh, since the world of sport. Could you briefly talk about how you've applied some of those skills and principles in whatever else you've done in life uh, since? I mean, most of it's been TV and there's a lot of similarities. You spend a lot of time off camera getting ready for your moment on camera that sort of moment when somebody's counting down in your ear and you think, I haven't got a clue what I'm going to say, is <laughs> terrifying, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but a bit like standing on the end of the triple jump runway, I'm thinking, even though you know, I might know I can do it, the doubt that used to go through my mind was incredibly profound. But understanding that that moment of fear and utter terror wasn't going to stop me doing what I was about to do, whether it be triple jump or whether it be presenting on television. I mean, there were times leading up to a major championships where I would want to be anywhere else in the world but at that major, ch major championships, even though that's what I trained for. When I was actually in it, I enjoyed it, but the lead up to it was absolutely excruciating. <laughs> but just before that jump, there's a big smile on my face, and I loved what I was doing. Because the athlete that we we'll hopefully see in London 20, 2017, who does that so well, is Bolt. I genuinely don't think he's really scared. I think he enjoys what he's doing. Mm. He's performing on a stage, he knows he's good, and it almost seems he doesn't have any self-doubt. I found a lot of people outside sport are often very surprised to hear that elite athletes, such as these folks, they do experience that fear. In 93, which was my first uh, World Championships where I won a medal, uh, Linford Christie won the 100 metres. Uh, it was in Stuttgart. And I remember chatting to Linford af afterwards. And of course, Linford, you see him on the line, and he looked utterly fearless. He would crush his opponents without even touching them, just by his look. And he talked to me about how nervous he was, how he'd watched the other semi final. He'd seen, I think, the American Andre Quezon, who looked really good, and he was genuinely scared. And, and I'm sitting there thinking, this is Linford Christie telling me he's scared. And that really helped me. I'm interested in your thoughts on um, this World Champs later in the summer being on home soil. Yeah. Because um, there seem to be two arguments to this. Some people would say it's great being at home and there are, there's an upside to yeah. that, but equally uh, added pressure. So the last, Olympics, so the last Olympics before Rio was in London and that was on our home soil. 
and we didn't even have a relay team together. And then four years later, looking in Rio, we actually came away with a bronze medal, showing the strength of our women's relay and our sprinting. So it's just really powerful to know that we're going into our home champ this year, um, potentially coming out with medals. Yeah, great. It's really exciting. Fantastic. We're all excited for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.